So the kinds of jobs that our LEADS graduates are getting with a major or an emphasis in operations and information management is very wide and diverse. And that's one of the challenges I think our students have in understanding the major. Well, let me give you a few examples from this semester. So one of our students got a job with Google. The student also is minoring in Chinese, Mandarin Chinese. So he's working with a Google team that's deploying you know, their applications, the Google apps and some of the other things they're doing in that marketplace. Another example of a job that a student got was with Ernst & Young in their advisory services group. So Ernst & Young is one of the largest accounting firms in the world and their advisory services group is out doing a lot of consulting work. So maybe they're implementing SAP, a big piece of software for a customer. Maybe they're actually helping the audit team, making sure that the system that's processing the different accounting transactions is doing it properly. So a wide range of different things that those people are doing in the accounting firms. And many of our students got jobs with the accounting firms. Actually, that was just one example. It's always hard if you think about it just from the context of classes, but let me give you some examples of some classes our students take and then the kinds of jobs that that might translate to for them. So, so one example of a class that we teach in operations and information management is business intelligence. So I'm a company, I'm Target Corporation, or I'm Safeway, I'm some large company that has lots of customers and lots of transactions, I sell a lot of stuff. I collect a lot of information about my customers, about the products I'm selling. Well, somebody needs to go through and look at that data to say, you know, this product is selling better than this other product. Maybe we shouldn't carry product B. We should carry more of product A. You know what? This customer is paying us much faster than this other customer. You know what? Maybe we ought to start to treat customer A who's paying us quicker differently than customer B who's not paying us as quickly because they're a better customer. So our students actually get exposed to how to use these databases in the class, actually go in and interrogate or go in and look at this data that's being collected and actually make sense of it so that the business can make better decisions. One, one other example of, 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 a, of a class um, that we teach is a project management where we actually work with a real client on a project. So for Pepsi Beverages this past semester, they asked us to save 5% of the gas that they consume in their business. Our students identified 47% gas savings, gas that they use to heat the building, to heat the water, um, of, of which 20% actually uh, can be in, implemented and paid back in less than one year. So Pepsi Beverage is going to implement the, at least 20% of it, if not more. So the students have that on a resume. They're applying things they've learned in our supply chain class, right? Our business intelligence class. Mm -hmm. You know, in our other operations and information management classes, systems thinking. Mm -hmm. So they're actually applying what they've been learning in the classes. Yeah, that's a great question. So supply chain, that's a very important part of really any business, whether it's a service business or a business that's moving products around, you know, stuff around. A supply chain allows me as a business to go source what I need, materials or people, okay? I transform those materials, I utilize those people that I've, that I've sourced, and I actually take something and I add value to it. So maybe, I, maybe I'm Walmart and I go to the manufacturers who produced all these really cool products that the consumer wants to buy and I've come up with a really, really, really efficient cost efficient, right, time efficient way to get the products from the manufacturers onto the store shelves where the consumer can purchase those and make sure I have the right products the customers want and enough volume at the right price for the customers. So that's an example of a supply chain, but really any company has a supply chain. I take raw materials or human capital and I transform those into something that the consumer is willing to pay at a price that they can afford. More and more businesses are saying, you know what, we really want you to have real experience. Mm -hmm. And we value an undergraduate degree and those real work experiences. And your ability to move out into the working world and be successful. So, so I don't think the student needs to go get a degree to get a good job, a graduate degree to get a good job. Now, depending on what that, wants to, that student wants to do longer term, a graduate degree might be something that helps them. For instance, they have to get an undergrad in business, 
They graduate, they work for two or three or four years in a particular field, they enjoy it, but it's not their dream field or their dream job. They decide they want to go back and maybe go work for, you know, on Wall Street and finance, or they want to go do, you know, work in one of the accounting firms um, in an area they're not familiar with. Well, then certainly going back and getting a graduate degree would help them make that switch. Mm -hmm. But in terms of getting a great job, being successful in that job in that industry, they don't need a graduate degree to do that. I've taught for 11 years, you know, in this space. I worked for 20 years in this space in operations and information management all over the world. And as I look at the students that are successful, not just in our major, in, in really any major, and the students that go out and are successful in the working world, oftentimes it's the students that are, that are able to deal with ambiguity, right? So, so the problem's not perfectly clearly defined. The, the, the model for the solution is not laid out that they have to actually fill in you know, the blanks or fill in the dots. Um, they come into our program and we're, we're asking them to do very challenging things. We're giving them the Pepsi project, save 5% of gas, they save 47%. That's a challenging project. That requires a lot of work. That was extremely ambiguous. Absolutely. The, the way you're going to differentiate yourself in this market, and it's not just now because of the recession, employers have realized that they can do more work with fewer people. They can use automation, right, technology, processes, all the things that we teach our students how to do can go in the companies and help them reduce headcount because that's where companies, we've been going for many years, and they, many of them have been very profitable through these last you know, year or two with many fewer people on board. Um, so the way a student's going to differentiate themselves from their competition, all the other graduates coming out, is by having not just the college classroom experiences, but also the work experiences through internships, through projects, and the other things that are available to them while they're in school. So it's absolutely imperative that they do that. There's a number of great faculty that are really open to talking to our students. I'm probably the best person for them to start with because I represent the organization in terms of that relationship with our students. Um, but clearly, you know, if they have interest in specific classes, the faculty member listed that will be teaching that class would be a great person to talk to. I can make that introduction for them. I could sit and give them some background about that person, about the class. Um, we offer a major, but we also offer a certificate. I think it's important that our students understand maybe I want to major in accounting, mm -hmm. but I also realize that having some information technology, right, some systems, some operations perspectives is really important in my job as an accountant. They can get a certificate in operations and information management, and I also, I also um, coordinate that too. So. Well, every semester there's a workshop where the different majors are presented, different degrees are presented to the students. We certainly participate in those events. We also held an event um, last fall semester where we uh, invited students to come meet with, em with employers and also business people that work in the space to, to have a chance to kind of meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. The students need to really understand is they can never go to too many of those where we, have, we bring employers in to speak or we bring in some multimillionaire or billionaire to talk about how they got rich or we bring in somebody who's changed the world right through through some social project that they they engage with I mean those are experiences that are not typically offered to them once they leave an institution like ours and they can never go to too many of those and the, the other thing that students often don't realize is when the events over they should go down and talk to that person one-on-one. -on -one. They should take advantage of the fact that the person's there and is interested in engaging with them.